Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day. service, the closing hymn today will be that one. And as you can tell, this is just a, a metrical and musical phrasing of the Lord's Prayer, which is what we're going to be turning our attention to here at St. Paul's in our catechism of the summer catechism uh, series. We're turning this week and next week into this gift that Jesus has given to the church. As we come to the Lord's Prayer, I would venture to say that this is one of those texts that probably everybody knows, right? At some level, if I were to say I pledge allegiance to the flag, it's in that same category as our Father who art in heaven. Even if you're not a part of the church, even if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have some knowledge of this. And because of that, because it's so familiar, it's very easy to fall into autopilot. It's very easy to let those words fall off of our lips without much thought. And so we're going to take some time and turn on our thinkers and say, what is Jesus doing by giving us this wonderful gift of the Lord's Prayer? More on that as we go on in the service. A couple things before we begin. First, I would love it if you would take your smartphones and make them quiet, but also turn on the camera and use that camera to take a scan of the QR codes that you'll see in the pews around you. This is a great way, just do it now, as a great way for you to let us know that you've been among us here at St. Paul's. It'll lead you to a form, just fill it out. If you happen to be out there in Facebook land, welcome for you as well. We're so glad you've joined us remotely. There is a link down in the comment section of the Facebook feed so that you can fill out that very same form. This is really important to us because people are the church. So God has given us his body. He makes us into his body, and it's good that we keep 
tabs and keep with one another. So please let us know that you've been here. We'd really love to be able to reach out to you in that way. And speaking of reaching out to you, there are people in our congregation who are not members of our congregation. They're kind of toe in the water. They're figuring out if this is their church home. And because of this, we'd like for you to let us know that that might be something you're thinking about. We'll engage in conversation about it. Coming up here in the fall, there'll be a new member gathering. We'll talk a little bit about what it means to be Lutheran. We're kind of Catholic and kind of uh, evangelical, and you kind of put the two of them together, and you get this 10 degrees off of normal thing that is Lutheran. It's a wonderful place to be. So we're going to get to down to that uh, as we turn uh, into the fall months. Also, I'd like to uh, point out that there are a number of the people who are here today. I have to give them a bit more kudos uh, because they've been out camping. St. Paul's Church camping trip has been a really wonderful time, even though it's been hot and rainy. We still have a great time up there at Murrow Lake State Park. And this year, we had the added benefit of broken water mains. Wasn't that fun? And locked bathrooms. So... All of this is to say, you should try this. It'll build your character. <laughs> uh, we, I'm so thankful for the people who have come down for camp uh, in order to be in worship today this way. If you'd like, if you'd like to come up for a little bit of a day trip, it's still available. There'll be people there today as well as we have break camp tomorrow morning. and hope we'll see you there for that. Um, with all of those things said, I think it's a great time for us to turn to the reason that we've gathered here this morning, and that is to worship our God who gives us the ability to communicate with him. He's not a distant God. He's not remote from us. In fact, he's right here among us, wherever two or three are gathered in his name. There he is, right in their midst. So let's call on him. I invite you to stand and join me in the gathering prayer. Let us pray together. O Lord, Lord my, my creator, creator, redeemer, and comforter, as I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, I humbly pray that you would open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. Our opening song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. May God bless you in worship this morning.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him, a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly I will show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Confession is a prayer to God, in which we admit and confess our sinfulness and ask God for his forgiveness. In full confidence of God's great mercy, let us speak to him as beloved children would speak to their loving Father. Acknowledging that by our nature and by our deeds, we're filled with sin and are powerless to save ourselves. Let us pray and openly confess that we have sinned against God and that we deserve his punishment now and eternally. But let us also pray with confidence through Jesus Christ that according to his promise, he will show us his unfailing mercy and love. Almighty God, we repent, repent of, our of our sins, of thought, thought word, and deed. Be merciful to us, and, and for our Lord's sake, grant us forgiveness, so that as your beloved and redeemed children, we may serve you faithfully and joyfully on earth and in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's share that peace one with another. Peace to the right side, peace to the left side, peace to the Facebook group, peace to the text group, peace, peace, peace. i 
be with you and also with you let us pray together almighty God, God whose compassion never fails and who invites us to call upon you in prayer hear us as we offer you our adoration confession thanksgiving and supplication and mercifully grant that that is in accordance with your good and gracious will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of the Lord. Brenda. The Old Testament reading for today is from 1 Chronicles, the 29th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for, all, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. God. Normally I'd have you stand for the Holy Gospel, but I'd like for you to turn on those thinkers and go carefully with me through the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you pray, Go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Are there any kids in the congregation that would like to come up right now for the children's message? I'd love to have you up here. I got something for you under this little veil here on this table, which I'm going to bring here into the middle of the church. Come on up, everybody. Come on up. There's room for you right up here. How many of you know that it's really important to keep drinking water? It's pretty important, right? Keep hydrated. Hydrate or dihydrate. We want to make sure that you stay wet. And what do you normally drink out of? What do you normally drink out of? A cup. That's right. And that's what I have underneath here. Can I have a drum roll, please? One, two, three. Woo! I not only have one cup, not two cups, but I have three cups. So if you had to pick which cup that you would like to drink out of, which one would you pick? You would pick that one. Why am I not surprised? The guy with the Under Armour uh, bat on his shirt. This one is from the Red Bulls, the New York Red Bulls. It's a game. And, and so you would pick that one too. Why would you pick this one? Yeah, it's, it's nice. How about you? Which one would you pick? You would pick that one. That is a very special cup. We'll talk about that one in a second. How about you? Which one would you pick? You would pick that one. That is a fancy, fancy cup. I'll tell you about that one too. Any others? How about you? Would you which one would you pick? That one too. That's a very special cup. I, there are three words that I want you to learn today. Right? This cup... Let's call this a common cup. Say that word, common. Common. It means it's every day. You can use it at any time. I use this one when I start off my day. I take a big, long drink of water to get me started in the right direction. Now, with this cup, I, I don't feel bad about throwing it around. I could go like this. I put it in the dishwasher. It's just common. It's an everyday kind of glass. You could drink whatever you want out of that cup, and it is just everyday use. I bet you have some like this at your house, right? Okay, so you could do that. So that's one. This cup, on the other hand, does anybody know what kind of cup this one is? It's a fancy cup. And what might you drink out of this fancy cup? Tea. You'd have to extend your pinky. <laughs> and you'd make a very fancy drink out of this. This is a very special one because I brought these back from a different country a long, long time ago for us to have in our house when I was a, a little kid growing up. And this is our fancy, fancy tea set. Now, would you use that every day? No, it's kind of a different kind of cup. Let's call this a special cup. Can you say that? Special, special cup. So we have a common cup that we put away down there that you might use every day. Do you think I would throw this one around? No, I would not. <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think I would bang this one together? No, I would not. Do you think I would just put this in the dishwasher? No, this takes hand fancy washing. It's very, 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 very fancy. All right, then there's one more. What kind of cup is this? A what kind of cup? A scepter cup? A special cup. Yeah, it is. So this doesn't normally go on this table, 
This normally goes up here on this table. And this is the cup that we use for communion, that special meal that we have at, in church each week. This cup, I don't want you to think of this cup as just special. It's definitely not common. It's never just special. This is holy. Can you say that word? Holy. Holy means we make it special, and it's only for communion. That's the only thing we do with this. We don't take it out and throw it around, do we? We don't take this thing and bang it on the table, do we? No. We don't even put this in the dishwasher, do we? No. This is holy, and it's set apart for a special purpose, and that's to receive what God gives us, His body and blood. It's pretty incredible. But you know what else are things that are common and special and holy? There are words that are common, special, and holy. So let's talk about a common word. How about like, hey there. Do you hear somebody say hello every day? Somebody says good morning every day? It's pretty common. We use it all the time. And we use words like and, but, or, the, all the time. Regular words. But then there are other kinds of words that are special. Like, thank you. And I love you. And you're beautiful. And things like that. Bon appetit. That is also very special. You're right. So these words, we don't use all the time, and we want to be sure that we're using them in the right way and telling them to the people that should be hearing them. But then there's a word that's holy, like this cup, and that's God's name. So God lets us talk to him in prayer. We can pray and talk to God, and he's listening. That is something very holy because God is so powerful and so good and so tremendously kind that he said, if you call on me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, which means that God, when we call on him, is going to help. And he gave us this gift of prayer, which means that when we call on God's name, we ought to have something holy to say to him. Do you know what's holy for God to hear? When we say, I love you, Lord, it's holy. When we say, thank you, Lord, it's holy. When we say, help me, Lord, it's holy. So when we talk to God in prayer, like we're learning about today in the Lord's Prayer, it's holy. It's so special that we only use it for God. So when we call on God's name, we better have something to say. So why don't we call on him now and ask him in a holy way to be our friend? Are we going to do prayer? Would you like to help us pray? All right, let's hold our hands then. Would you help us pray too? Oh Lord, your name is holy and calling on your name is is a holy privilege. Thank you for hearing us. We need you, O Lord, and we thank you for promising for to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Bless us as your children to call on you as our loving Father. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up for this children's message. Remember to call on God and use that holy language as often as you can. You get on going back to your seats and we stand up to sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, and from the Holy Spirit, who intercedes for us with sighs more beautiful than words. Amen. Please be seated. Remember Pastor Ethan? 2018, he took a call out to Cedarburg, Wisconsin. He was associate pastor here at St. Paul's for a couple of years. He put into my hands back in 2017 a book called Our Journey Home. It's the title of this sermon. I recommend it highly. It was by his professor from Concordia University, Wisconsin, Reverend Dr. Daniel E. Pavola, and Pavola is one of those Finnish names that has way more vowels than consonants, so Pavola. Dr. Pavola was a pastor of a church in Butternut, Wisconsin, and he was faced with a conundrum. He wanted to teach people, most of whom had been Lutherans all of their life, and some people who were just brand new to the faith, in the same class about the Lord's Prayer. Some of them had prayed the Lord's Prayer tens of thousands of times. Others were just barely getting to know our Father who art in heaven. So he was casting about for a way, some sort of device that he could teach both groups at the same time something new. And he came up with the notion, and I think, the Holy Spirit led him into this, that the Lord's Prayer is, is a journey. It is a journey home. Is there any more lovely sounding word and concept in the English language than home? Does it even sound comforting? Like there's a cup of coffee waiting for you there already and somebody with their arms open, you know, Paul Simon wrote, home where my thoughts escape and home where my music's play and home where my love lies waiting silently for me. Home. We, we like going home. We go home for Christmas. We sing songs about that. I'll be home for Christmas. Home here on earth is not just where you hang your hat. Home is where they love you. And this prayer, this Lord's Prayer is really based on and steeped in and reaching out for that thing that makes home home, love. So I want to take us through where we've been in the catechism, just so that we refresh our memories. Martin Luther started this, 1529, he published it after touring Germany and seeing that EGAD, it was a mess in every home and in every church in order to understand what they believed, he went and asked he said, we need to help train up these families and children and pastors in the way they should go. And so he published this book, The Small Catechism, to help that. And there are six parts of that. We call them the six chief parts. And he started out with the Ten Commandments. And this was intentional. Why? Because the Ten Commandments explain our circumstance. They help us to understand what is our predicament. We look at the Ten Commandments and it says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. And we say, ugh, I've had plenty of other gods before him. You shall not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. Oh, I definitely have used that holy thing in unholy ways. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I've not always been great about God's word. Honor your father and mother, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, don't bear false witness against your neighbor, don't covet anything, and we all fall short. And so Martin Luther wanted those folks then and us folks now, just like God wants us, is to kind of look and say, we need help. We need God's assistance, because left to our own devices, what do we do? Daily we sin much. And we fall short of the glory of God. The law of God serves as three, three ways. One is a curb to let us know when we have left the road. A mirror so that we can examine ourselves according to God's standards. And as a guide to shape our future behavior. But the law doesn't help us. We are powerless to keep it perfectly. And that's how God wants us to keep it is perfectly. You shall be perfect 
even as I am perfect, he says. And so we are in this stretch of a paradox where we have to be perfect, but we can't be perfect. And then Martin Luther turns away from the law, leaving us kind of dangling. And he says, but wait, there's more. And the next part of the catechism is the Apostles' Creed. And over the past month or so, we took that apart. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what the Apostles' Creed does is it lines up for us and shows us with clarity that what we never on our own could do, God was willing to do for us. That He provided all that we need. That not only does He give us what we need to support this body and life, but He also gives us what we need to support the body of Christ and the life that we share together as the church. He gives us forgiveness of sins. He gives us strength. He gives us hope. He gives us faith. Everything that we need, He gives, He gives, He gives out of His grace to us, delivering it not only by the work of Jesus Christ, but the ongoing presence of God in our lives by the Holy Spirit. And so Luther, with one hand, takes away, because with one hand, God takes away. And then he, with the other hand, Luther gives what God has given. So now that we have gotten to that spot, Luther then asks the question, now that we're in, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with this great gift that God has given us? And he said, the Lord's Prayer starts to answer that question. We're going to receive love, and we're going to give love. We're going to take what God has given to us and make sure that it gets beyond us. And so the way we're going to break down the Lord's Prayer is into two parts. We're going to start today with the introduction, and we're going to focus mostly on that. And then next week, when you come back, We'll start with the part of how God provides for us daily from His hands by being involved in our lives, attentive to our needs, ready and willing and able to supply them. So today, we're going to talk about our Father. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Stop. And thy will be done. Thy, thy will be done. There we go. All of that. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's it. So if you can think about it this way, our journey home parallels the journey home that we hear about in Luke with the prodigal son. That's when I saw the title of the book from Dr. Pavel. That's what I thought it was about. And the Lord's Prayer and the prodigal son stories come together really, really well. Remember the story of the prodigal son, where two boys, son of a father, the younger of them who was not supposed to inherit the lion's share of the property, decided he was going to go to his dad and say, I wish you were dead, dad. I want your share of the property. And so his father gave it to him. And at that point in time, he stuffed it in his pocket and went off into a foreign country and squandered it in loose living, as it says in Scripture. And he took all that he had, and he lost all that he had. And in doing so, he finally said, well, I no longer have a nest egg to spend down. I had better hire myself out. And he did. He went and worked on a farm. And what was his job but to feed pigs? And in feeding pigs, he was prohibited from eating even the pig food. He said, my dad's house, the servants eat better than this. And so the prodigal son started writing his own prayer. He started composing in his head what he was going to do for his father. Dad, I'm coming home. And here's what I'll do. I'll sign on as one of your hired hands. And you can treat me like them. I'll live out where they live. I'll eat what they eat. You're a better boss than the boss I have here. Do you know what he forgot? He forgot that he had a father and not just a boss. And maybe he was worried that his previous actions would have disqualified him from his father's favor. I don't know. But I do know this, that when he started going home, his father was standing on the brow of a hill 
of watching and looking for him. And when he saw him coming, the dad stripped off his clothes and ran so that his robes wouldn't encumber his speed and threw his arms around his kid's neck. And he said, what was lost was found. What is dead was alive. Come on, kid. We're going to kill the fattened calf. I'm going to put a ring on your finger and a robe around you. I am so glad that you are home. That's the kind of God we have who says, Call my father your father. Jesus, when his disciples are gathered around him in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus points out, he says, don't pray like those folks who are standing down by the temple. They're standing down there so that people can see that they're praying. Don't be like that. Instead, you go in your room, you shut the door, and pray to your father who sees in secret. It's not just that God can see into your room. God can see into your heart. He can see into your mind. He can see into your life. He can see into your relationships. He can see all that's in need, all that's broken. He can see all that you're rejoicing over and all that you're wringing your hands over. He can see all of those things in secret, and he's already provided for it. And then Jesus says, also, when you pray, don't babble on, blah, 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 and heap up empty phrases, thinking that somehow you're climbing a ladder, that by your oratory and the skill of your words, you're able to get God to pay attention. He's already paying rapt attention to you. Instead, he says, pray like this, our Father. Jesus is inviting you home. Jesus is says, we've got a place set for you already. We've got a robe for you. We'll put a ring on your finger. In fact, we'll put a crown on your head. You are a guest that is honored by God to come into his place. Our journey home, we have every time that we bow our heads and we say, our Father, it's incredible because who is he to us? Some have think of him as the almighty creator who set the world in motion and then went away. And he's left us to our own devices, but it's not true. He's with us right now. And when we walk out of this place and when we drive home and wherever we drive and when we go to work and when we visit with our families, he's right there with us. Our homes is where God makes his home so that we can be at home with him now and at home with him later. When you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. He doesn't say, oh, judge who is trying to catch me doing wrong. Some think of him in that way, that he is almighty in his surveillance and he's just looking for you to trip up but that's not our God either our father who art in heaven may your name be holy may your kingdom come to me may your will be done in me the same way that the angels do what you want there in heaven this is absolute privilege that we've been given. This is absolute honor that we have been given. That Jesus, our brother, our older brother, says, you can call on the Father the way I do. And what I depend on him for, you can depend on him for. And what I rejoice in him about, you can rejoice in him about. This is a great gift of God working in us to make us more and more like Christ our Lord. So, the temptation is great to let the Lord's prayer become a formula. It's not. God doesn't work in formulas 
There is no magical incantation that's going to get him roused to do the work that you want him to do. But he is attentive. And he is powerful. And he is giving, generous, good, merciful, and kind. And Jesus says, if you want that, pray like this. Our Father, and know that the Father is ready to give you more than you could ever ask or imagine. In heaven, may your name be holy. May your will be done among us the way it's done in heaven. It's a great place to start. In our catechism walk this year, I have reminded you a couple of times that you can start your day in a good way by letting your feet hit the ground from bed and starting by in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Luther goes on to say, then pray the Lord's Prayer. It's a good one. Take your time through it. That's the challenge for the week. Start your day that way, calling on the Lord and remembering that He is there as the loving Father, ready to give more than we could ask out of his great love for us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In just a moment, nope, not that hymn. Sorry, we're going to pass that right on by. <laughs> we're just about done. On our journey home, may the Lord bless you and remind you that the Lord is just waiting. Our Father is just waiting to hear from you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. And may the peace of God that passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds rejoicing in the Lord and calling on Him in prayer. Amen. Our next hymn is Our Father Who From Heaven Above. This is a Martin Luther text. As Martin Luther did a whole lot better than words with words than he did with melody, uh, we're going to be using the Eternal Father Strong to Save as the melody for this hymn. Baptized into Christ Jesus and living together in trust and hope, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. In addition to the prayers that came to us it, earlier on in the week that we were able to include in our weekly connect, there are a number of other concerns that have come in since then. So I want to point out, there they are, people like uh, Ella Sampson, our organist, one of our organists here at St. Paul's who's hospitalized and has been for several days now. May the Lord restore her. We are asking safe travel and Godspeed for those who are traveling for work or vacation or students heading back to college. Sarah Healy, daughter of Mary Jo, um, is, and, and Pat is undergoing tests at Albany Med. For Johanna, the daughter of Andrea and Bill Campbell, who's still su suffering with poisoning from heavy metals. Bill, who's the nephew of Thomas Whalen, I learned about this at worship. Last evening, uh, Bill is out of the ICU, but not out of the woods just yet. We want to remember our sister, Rose Sharp, who is still recovering after a stroke. For Charlie Lanfear's neighbor, who had a fire in her apartment. We want to remember Jim Fenton, who is the brother of Andrea Campbell, who is anticipating surgery tomorrow. Frank Coppola Jr. and the family of Eileen Coppola, who passed away this week, and this is from Joanne Hughes out there in Facebook Live. I want to remember our brother Kevin, that he gets the help that he needs. Continued prayers for Mike Lawson and all those who are caregivers of Alzheimer's and dementia patients. And please keep his mom, Margaret, and dad, Chuck, during, uh, in, in prayer during this difficult time. Um, this is uh, from Samson, one of our social media followers out in India. Um, he is appealing to St. Paul, to his brothers and sisters in Christ, prayers for salvation of the people in India. Indeed, O oh Lord, uh, please come to them and bring them into your fold. Continued prayers for Susan Smith as Alzheimer's continues to advance and for those who are caregivers taking care of those patients. And praise and thanksgiving that Tiara is out of the hospital and the baby that she's carrying is okay. That continued prayers for healthy pregnancies for her and for uh, Terry Knowlton's friend, Morgan. I'm um, sorry, Megan, Megan. Lots of prayers. This is good that we come to the Father. If you have other prayer concerns, send them in to prayer at spaluther.org. We rejoice to pray with you and on them and for them. I'd also invite you, if you have the ability to join us, in a conference call that happens every Monday at 1030 called Monday Connect. You can find information about how to get onto that conference call where we pray for these needs and others that come up. Um, and you can find information about that in our weekly Connect. It's there every week. And we have this, uh, this meeting every week. And I hope that you'll join us to call on the Lord this way. Because our Father says, come and ask. You're coming to a king. Once upon a time, John Newton wrote, large petitions with you bring. So let's come with what is burdening our hearts, but we're cumbered with this load of care. Jesus knows our every weakness. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, through Jesus' sacrifice, you have restored us as your forgiven children. In his name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, help us to know you through your inspired word and to live by it as beloved children in your family. Hallowed be thy name. Give us your Holy Spirit to rule in our hearts and use us to extend your kingdom of grace to others. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Make us zealous to carry out your will as gladly as the angels do and to conform our will to yours. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Merciful Lord, since you are the provider of all things necessary for our bodies, fill us with trust, especially for all those concerns that we have brought to you just now and for these that we remember in the silence of our hearts. Give us this day our daily bread. Continue to erase our sins and help us gladly to forgive and to do good to those who wrong us. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We know how the devil seeks to destroy our souls and how the world lures us to ruin by appealing to the desires of our flesh. 
guard us from the poison of misbelief and the trap of unrepented sin. And lead us not into temptation. Keep safe our bodies and souls, our property and honor, and above all, send the Holy Spirit to preserve our faith in Christ, leading to eternal life. But deliver us from evil. For all these petitions, we look to you as King of kings and Lord of your church. For For thine thine is is the the kingdom. kingdom. You alone, O God, hold the power to grant our requests and and the the power. power. We worship you from whom all blessings flow and and the the glory glory forever forever and ever. Relying on Jesus who canceled our sin and made us acceptable in your sight, we pray with confidence. Amen. 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 It shall be so. Amen. As we come to the Lord now, thankful for all that he has given us first, we return our tithes and offerings. If you've brought an offering today, there is an offering plate at the door of the church where we'll receive that, and I'll say thank you for doing that. Otherwise, you might consider giving electronically. You can find information about that on St. Paul's website at spalutheran.org slash give. But however we're giving our offerings, they join with our prayers as our spiritual sacrifice to God. And so I invite you to stand and pray with me the offertory prayer. Let us pray together. God of all goodness and grace, receive these gifts that we offer in thankful obedience to your word and grant that not only these gifts, but our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we bless you that in him you have promised to hear us and in compassion have lavished your forgiveness upon us. Grant us grace to faithfully call on you and to depend on you to provide all that we need as we await the day we behold and live in the glory of your eternal presence, where we will join with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for all you have done for your people in Jesus Christ our Lord. Accept our praise and grant that all who partake this day of Christ's body and blood in his precious blood may be filled with your heavenly peace and fullness of joy. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the the Lord's Lord's death death until until he he comes. comes. of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Come, for all things are now ready.
Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Amen. Amen. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your, your great, great love for your, for your creation, creation is far beyond our comprehension. Our comprehension. We thank you for the peace, pardon, and comfort we have received here at your table of grace. Strengthen us and keep us steadfast throughout our pilgrimage on earth, and bring us at last to the heavenly banquet in your kingdom. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. 